Alexa, what's the weather? It's a beautiful day outside with plenty of sunshine, clear skies, and very warm temperatures. It said clear skies and warm temperatures. It's cloudy and cold. I don't think so. Weather predictions. We all know how bad these usually are. And here where I live, weather stations have not been invented yet, so even the current weather is usually not very precise. So of course I thought about building my own DIY weather station and the more I'm thinking about it, the more I come to the conclusion that maybe a DIY weather station is just the best DIY project you can build. I will try to explain you why in this video, but there is another thing that I love about the idea of building a weather station and that is data or data, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Why you ask? Well, because of that. That is my degree in, are you ready? Come closer artificial intelligence. Wait, wait, don't run, I'm joking, it's a degree in data science. Of course, it includes topics like artificial intelligence and machine learning. The second one can be useful to predict weather locally and, for example, give you the chance of rain in the next few hours. But to properly train the classifiers, you need a lot of quality data and for that, well, I need a weather station. If you are wondering about my degree, for everyday use case, it serves as a fancy paperweight. And now that I'm thinking about it, I could just buy a proper paperweight on Amazon and save myself five years of my life. Anyway, let's build a weather station and let me tell you why I think it's such a cool project. Here are six reasons why DIY weather station is such a cool project. Number one, it can be as simple and as complex as you want it to be. Even a simple thermometer with just a few LEDs well, that's basically already a weather station. And you can add more sensors, you can add a display to display the data, you can connect it to the internet to send all this stuff to a server and collect it in the database. And by the way, that's what I'm going to do in this video. You can create a website that will show all this data on nice plots. I will do it as well. It's a good mix between hardware and software. You can still tinker around with hardware, solder something, 3D print it, and you can still create the software, but it's not only software-based project or hardware-based project. And at the same time, it's not like a robotics project where it is quite complicated with mechanics and there is a lot of stuff that can go wrong as it did with my last video that you can see right here about a robotic arm. There are a lot of sensors to choose from and you can start as simple as with just one thermometer, but you can add a humidity sensor, rain sensor, wind spin sensor, air quality, there is a lot of stuff to choose from and these sensors are not really that expensive. Usually you have a wide range starting with very low cost probably also a bit lower quality components and you can buy something very high quality, professional and expensive. And that brings me to the next point. Weather station is quite inexpensive to build, especially if you compare it to some robotics project. Weather station is in general not really that expensive. It's simple enough and stationary that it may even work on a breadboard, so you don't need a custom PCB, you don't need to create a protoboard, but I will create a protoboard in this video for my weather station. But because the project is not moving and if you enclose it properly to protect it from the weather, it can be built on a breadboard, which makes it a lot easier to do for beginners. And lastly, it's a useful project that you and your family can use every single day to look at the weather. And I think that's very important in building your first DIY projects so that these projects are not only fun to build, but also fun to use. Enough talking, let's start building. I started by looking at all the sensors I collected over the years, there's quite a lot of that, and I took only these that are useful for a weather station. For the microcontroller, I decided to go with Raspberry Pi Pico W, this one has Wi-Fi, so it can be connected to the internet, and then I started designing some components that I do not have and are not that easy to buy, at least in Poland, and that, for example, is the device for measuring the wind speed, it's called anemometer or a wind speed measuring device. It was all designed in Fusion 360 from Autodesk, my favorite CAD software, and then I 3D printed it on Bamboo Lab machines with carbon fiber reinforced PETG. The layer adhesion between the layers is quite terrible, as you can see, and that was totally unusable, so I 3D printed that with normal PETG and that worked great. I'm really curious to see how PETG will hold up after a few years of being outside. My design of the anemometer included a 608 bearing inside, so I took off the protective rubber things from the sides and I wanted to clean the grease from the inside to make it run very very smoothly. I tried to do it with isopropyl alcohol, with hot water and in the end just compressed air worked the best and the bearing is running very very smoothly now, so I assembled it with the M8 screw and that was it. It was working pretty well. 
it does work very well. I 3D printed this funnel-like design for the rain sensor to concentrate the rain on the sensor and I also added these vent holes on the sides so that the rain can evaporate after some time. I thought about painting it and smoothing but that was just too much work. With a magnet and a hole sensor I was able to detect the rotation of the anemometer but the sensor was not protected in any way from water so I used hot glue. I know epoxy is used for that but I do not have any. I hope hot glue will work. I started working on the protoboard but also on the website and I finished it very early thanks to AI. I will tell you more about the tech stack and all the details of my website later. So I have my website ready but where can I host it? How about the sponsor of this video? Hostinger. Hostinger is an all-in-one service provider so you can register here your own domain and run your server, whether that's a VPS, a virtual private server like it is in my case for this app, where you can run Docker containers, databases, custom apps, whatever you need. But with Hostinger you can also easily set up and host WordPress websites. Most of the websites I built in my life were built with WordPress and WooCommerce. I still use them, they run pretty well and I think WordPress is a great solution if you want to build your very own website easily. And if WordPress is not your thing, you can easily generate a website with Hostinger's Website Builder. All you have to do is to describe your website in detail and after a moment you get that, a fully functional website. I told it to generate a website about CNC machining, it did a very good job. The pricing start at just $2.99 per month for WordPress hosting and $4.99 for a VPS. But here is the best part, you can get a 10% discount on any yearly plan using my link which will be in the description, it's hostinger.com slash nicodem and you can use code nicodem at checkout to get the discount as well. Thanks out to Hostinger for sponsoring, sponsors like this are perfect because I get to use their product in my project, they support my project so that I can for example buy the parts and you get a discount which I think is pretty nice. Don't forget to check out the link in the description because it helps me a lot. And now we go back to the video. And then I started soldering everything on a protoboard. I totally do not recommend this approach, you should firstly build a prototype on a breadboard, something like this, to make sure that everything works and that your connection is proper and then you can move this design to a protoboard. Of course, between this and the protoboard or a PCB, it's a good idea to create a schematic, even something simple as this thing, and that's the schematic I used for my weather station. The program I used to design this one is called Fritzing and it's very easy to use and open source. If you need something more professional, then KiCad will be a great choice. How to properly connect the sensors? Well, you just grab the sensor, for example, the S18B20, a temperature sensor, and the pinout of the Raspberry Pi Pico, and you need to connect them both together, but how to do it properly? Of course, you can look for the documentation of the module and figure that out, but I don't really like documentation, so I just look for tutorials online on specific modules. There's plenty of that, you can find that on YouTube, on Instructables, on various blogs. Usually, you can find a pretty clear schematic on how to connect it and an example program. So with these two things, you can figure out how to use each sensor one by one and then connect them all together. And you can say that the breadboard prototype is not really necessary, but once you have the protoboard soldered or you have a professional PCB made by JLCPCB, it's very hard or even impossible to modify anything. So making sure that your project works with this schematic diagram on a breadboard is a great idea. And as I mentioned, because this project is not moving and if you enclose it properly, you can even use a breadboard and it will work without any soldering at all. And that makes this project beginner friendly. I soldered cables and headers on the protoboard because all the sensors are going to be attached with breadboard cables so that I can put them outside of the case. I also built a simple voltage divider with two resistors so that I can divide the voltage from the battery that is 12 volts and have it safe to measure with the analog pin on the Raspberry Pi Pico. You can see the 12 volts and it is divided to only 2 volts. ChatGPT wrote all the code for me for the Pi Pico and most likely it already works but I have to connect all the sensors manually because that's something that well ChatGPT cannot do for me so now I need like an Optimus or Atlas robot to do it for me but this kind of precise manipulation this is like a very distant future in my opinion but once robots can do that I'm basically jobless it's been a week since I said that and I think that distant future is not that distant anymore look at that that's crazy Here is the board with all the sensors connected to my power supply that shows 
11.6 volts. And here is the simple website that I've just created for the Raspberry Pi Pico. It is like running on the Raspberry Pi Pico. The Raspberry Pi Pico is a server right now. And we can see the temperature, humidity, uh, pressure, the wind speed, which yeah, it's not moving, so it's almost zero. And battery voltage is 11.7. .7. It was 11.6 .6 on my broadband power supply, so that's pretty accurate. This time I also decided to 3D print my own case. It was designed again in Fusion 360 so that all components fit nicely and it was printed with PETG filament. So now I just have a quite big piece of wood and here at the very top I will attach the wind speed meter holder to attach it to and then here will probably go the box with all the electronics and above that the solar panel. So now on my website weather.industry.cc I can just refresh it and you can see 21 degrees wind speed is 0, humidity 91 In case you are wondering what sensor did I use for my weather station for the pressure sensor it was BMP180 for the temperature and humidity it was DHT11 pretty poor choice because it turns out that the range of the sensor is from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius so I'm not able to measure the negative degrees and we do have negative degrees in Poland so I will have to replace this sensor later. For the sun sensor it's simply a photoresistor with a resistor and with the analog pin on the Raspberry Pi Pico I'm measuring the voltage and I'm doing the same thing for the battery I'm measuring the voltage with a voltage divider. The anemometer, as I showed you, I built it on my own, it's 3D printed, there is a little magnet hidden at the bottom of the anemometer and a small hole sensor that detects the magnet so I can simply count the RPMs of the anemometer. And with a simple function, convert that to speed in kilometers per hour. For the solar panel, unfortunately, I do not remember any specs, I just bought it online, it is charging the battery perfectly fine and the charger was included with the solar panel. I don't think there is any name for the rain sensor, it's simply a board with a small breakout board that you connect to your microcontroller and I 3D printed this small funnel that goes on top of the rain sensor. If you want to build your own weather station, that's great. I will put a link to more information in the video description and I will also put my CAD files for the anemometer and the case on MakerWord, which will also be included in the description. And now it's time to talk about the website. For my website, I used a very simple tech stack and that was flat because I'm familiar with Python. I also used Tailwind to make nice user interface and I also run my own database and for that I'm using Docker so that I have a Docker container for the database and for the website. Some of the code I used was generated with AI, or rather LLM. I'm joking, most of it. Actually, everything was generated with an LLM and it works very well. I'm using GitHub Copilot inside the Visual Studio code and it works super great for me. I just choose the entire code base and I prompt for editing or generating a landing page, a login page, whatever I need, and it works really, really well. For the user interface, I experimented a lot with different designs, but I think this Neo Brutalism works the best. It's very colorful and bright, and that's what I like. Large language models are definitely better at programming than I am, which is great because I never really enjoyed programming and now I can do it very, very quickly. When I change something in a project, I upload the changes to GitHub using GitHub desktop app, and then I open the browser terminal in Hostinger. And then I just do git pull, and if I need to, I rebuild and rerun my containers. At the top of the website you can see all the current values from the sensors and under that you have all the plots for temperature, humidity, pressure, wind speed, battery voltage and sun activity. And I think sun activity is my favorite plot because you can clearly see how the sun is moving and also when it was cloudy, which pretty much correlates with the battery voltage as it is charging with the solar panel. 
What's also interesting is that it's usually windy only during the day and not at night. And under the plot you can find about the weather station section and the footer. It might seem like everything is perfect about the project, but that's not true. There are good and bad things. For the good things, the 3D printed case is definitely waterproof. The 3D printed anemometer also works without any problems. For the website, it's kind of like in between good and bad because it's definitely a little bit overkill, but it was so easy to create it with AI that I actually think it's a good thing. For the bad things, the Raspberry Pi Pico, it definitely wasn't the best choice for this project. And there is only one reason and that is power consumption. It consumes a lot of power and that is a problem in a project that is battery powered. So definitely an ESP32 or an Arduino board would be a better choice. If you are going to build something like this, consider to switch uh, from Raspberry Pi Pico to these boards or use the new Raspberry Pi Pico 2 because this one is a little bit more optimized for power consumption. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this kind of summary where at the end of the video I share the good and the bad things so that you can improve your own projects as well. It is raining and it is quite cold. This is the current weather from my website. It's been like two weeks since I installed the weather station and here it is. Everything working really, really well, including the wind speed sensor, the solar panel, the box seems to be waterproof. There was a problem with the program for the Raspberry Pi Pico, but I fixed it very early and now it is working without any problems. It is always connected to the Wi-Fi and every five minutes it is sending the data to the database that is stored. So. In the future, I will have a lot of data to train my classifiers and do some machine learning for the weather here. This is the first weather station in the village where I live, which is pretty cool and it's pretty interesting. My family is using this and my website to check the weather. At least now we know what's the current temperature outside. I'm pretty happy with this project. I hope it inspired you to build even something simple, just a thermometer and a few ladies. That's already a weather station. And then you can grow to build something like this. It is quite cold and I feel like my hands are shaking. So I think it's time to end this video. Thanks a lot to you for watching and to Hostinger for sponsoring. Don't forget to check out the link to Hostinger in the description and I will see you in the next video. Bye.